Have you ever wanted to try Kubernetes, but didn't want to go through the hassle and the expense of setting up a cluster somewhere, or even the hassle of figuring out how to do it? Or have you ever tried using Minikube for demos or for development only to have it run out of memory on you or have it lose state at a crucial time? Well, Bitnami brings you something called the Kubernetes Sandbox, which is a way that you can try out Kubernetes or use Kubernetes in a lightweight way without actually touching your desktop at all and without having to go through the hassle and expense of setting up a production cluster and keeping it up. Let me show you just real quick in just a few minutes how to do it. So here I am at, at google.bitnami.com and this is Bitnami's launch pad for the Google Cloud. So you can from here launch all kinds of applications into the Google Cloud just with a single click. And you can see that we've got a lot of applications available. So I'm just going to do a search here to find Kubernetes. There it is. And I click the launch button. So this takes me to the page where I can define my deployment of the Kubernetes sandbox. It's going to deploy it right onto the Google Cloud for me. So um, I'll keep that name, but I want to use a different account. So I'm going to switch to my demo account. Um, and then I want to make a couple other changes here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make the disk size. I'm going to give it 50 gigabytes instead of 10 gigabytes. And if you look down at the estimated cost, you'll see that that actually doesn't increase the cost that much to change it up to 50 gigabytes. This will just give me more space if I want to run a whole bunch of applications on it. With only 10 gigabytes, I can use it. But for instance, if I try to run WordPress or some other things, it won't work real well. Uh, I'm also going to choose a high memory server just to give it a little more performance and again, a little more headroom. You can see that didn't change the cost that much. So if I was going to leave this up for a whole month, it would cost me like $62. But I'm only going to run it for a few minutes, so it's only going to cost me like pennies. So now I'm going to go ahead and create the hit the create button. So I've set my disk size. I've chosen high memory. Um, uh, whatever. I'll just use the default region, and I'm going to hit the create button. And this is going to then use Google's APIs to go ahead and create the Kubernetes sandbox for me. And you can say, see here. It'll just give me some feedback as it goes through the process of creating it. I can just, just watch it. Okay, so I'm back. In fact, after I started, I went and I, I did some other things. So you can see that I've actually, it's been running for about 25 minutes. I think it took about three minutes to start the Kubernetes sandbox going. So um, let's check a little things, a few things out. So first I'm going to show you how easy it is to get to the Kubernetes console. So I'm just going to click go to application and uh, the um, let's encrypt has not had time to go through yet. But then the information that I need here, this uh, authentication information is nicely provided for me right here. So it says the username is user and I copied the password user password. So with this information, now I'm able to get to what's called the, um, the Kubernetes console. And so this gives a bunch of information about Kubernetes. So um, let's take a look just real quick. You can see, for instance, if you go to the uh, cube system namespace, it has uh, shows a bunch of things that are already installed on there. So if you want to learn about deployments and jobs and pods and what replica sets, what these things are, how they work, um, you know, take a, take a look at the different parts of it. Uh, and you can even use this to get to logs and different things and do different configurations from the Kubernetes dashboard. You can do all that from right here. But let's actually... Um, launch the SSH console. And so what we've done is we've added everything that you need to the VM that Kubernetes is running on. So all your tools like Helm and Q 
cube config, I mean, cube control are all set up for you right away. So for instance, if you want to use cube cuddle get pods, this is the default, um, let me, sort of the default first command to run a command. You can see um, that, well, no, no resources found, but um, uh, I can do things like uh, cube cuddle um, config current context gives me some information, um, some information about that. But what I really want to look at is Helm. And Helm is a packaging, the packaging manager for Kubernetes. So first I'm going to do Helm in it to get it started from here. And then um, that basically set up the, the repos for me. And then I can do Helm search. And if I don't give any commands, it'll show me all the Helm charts that I have available. And so now what I want to do is I want to use it to launch an application on Kubernetes, right? Using the Helm install command. So I'm going to run something called Odoo. And I'm going to run Odoo because it makes a good demo because there's a whole bunch of GUI, you know, UI, web UI associated with it. So you can really show that it's running. So here's some information about the chart that I found at cubeapps.com. So if you go to cubeapps.com and look up Odoo, you'll see everything that you need to run the chart. The chart is basically the package. And in fact, like the key thing that I'm going to go down here and see is that I really need to set the Odoo password. That's like the key um, when I install. Otherwise, when I install it, there won't be a password and I won't be able to log in. So what I'm going to do is do Helm install and then um, let me just look at the syntax again. The syntax is dash dash set. And then I'm just going to call the password password for now. And then I want to get it from the stable repository Odoo. So um, again, like, so I just ran the command and I didn't have to set anything up on my laptop. I'm doing all this from the web. So looks like it all ran. And in fact, what we can do is we can come over here and if I um, poke around here, we can actually see that Helm created a deployment for me called Wiggly McCall. Sometimes I get a real kick out of the names that Helm makes up for. If you don't supply a name, Helm makes one up for you and sometimes they're pretty funny. So Wiggly McCall Odoo is the uh, deployment that set. You can see it set a Postgres deployment and an Odoo deployment because um, the chart configures Odoo, Odoo to use Postgres. So you can see that pods are set, replicas are set. Those are all running. If I, uh, I'm going to basically just keep refreshing. Um, okay, Postgres is ready. This looks really scary where it says readiness probe failed, but that just means that the, the, the containers inside the pods are still coming up. So that this is actually expected and normal. You can see Postgres is already ready. So I'm just gonna keep refreshing until, um, until, uh, until it's up. Actually, if I get bored of that, I can also come over here and I can see, do Helm list. And a Helm list, this will give me a list of the installed, um, the installed, uh, um, the installed charts. The only chart that I have right now is Wiggly McCaw. Um, I can also do cube cuddle get services, and this will show all the services that are exposed. Um, and you can see here, it's saying, here's the Odoo service that's exposed and here is a port mapping and the port mapping is port 80 to 30669 so i can actually use that to um to to get to the odoo instance uh, okay so now we can see that's ready so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the um i'm going to copy the ip address and i'm going to paste that in 
but then I'm going to go and tell it to go to the port 30669. And, oh, did I do that wrong? 30669. Okay. Oh, now it's ready. Sorry, I went to HTTPS instead of plain old HTTP. So now I think the default username that it creates is right here. So it's user at example.com. And then I set password as the password. And then I can log in. And uh, it'll show me, it's just doing some setup. Then it'll show me all the wonderful uh, services that Odoo actually surprise, supplies you. It's a pretty cool application. And then if I wanted to, I could do things like come back here, look at the Wiggly McCall pod, and now I can just see information about the container running, which is pretty cool. We can see the events that ran, etc. But now that I'm done my demo, what do I do? I don't want to keep paying for it forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, come back to the um, page where I launched it from, hit manage, and then this will open the Google's cloud platform for me. And I'm just going to hit the delete button. And all those resources are getting cleaned up for me instantly. So this whole demo will end up set up anything on my desktop.